you have been abducted by aliens and in order to prove your sentience you must build a computer from scratch if you fail to prove your sentience they will eat you welcome back to turing complete if you've never seen this game before this game has you doing everything from basic digital logic design all the way up through assembly programming so we're gonna get right back into it where we left off we were about to finish off the basic logic section this level is called bigger or gate the goal is to create an or gate with three inputs all right let's do it so we have a list of components that we can bring in up in the top right here and our goal is to create a bigger OR gate that allows for three inputs. So uh, the logic of an OR gate just means that if any of the inputs are high, then the output will be high. The only time the output will be low is if both of the inputs are low. Right now, we only have a two input OR gate and we need to make a three input OR gate. We can toggle the inputs here on the left and we can hook them up with these wires here. So I think this should be pretty straightforward. Right now, if I were to just connect two of my inputs up to an OR gate, then uh, obviously this is just an OR gate. Um, in order to have this third input considered, why don't we just connect the output to a third OR gate and then connect that to our output here. So now I think if, if either of these inputs are on, then the output will be on. So if we go ahead and run this logic, it'll verify that uh, we did it. So that unlocked a three pin OR gate for us. All right, that one was pretty straightforward. Let's keep moving on. What's next? Bigger AND gate, create an AND gate with three inputs. Okay, so let's try a similar approach. If we were to connect both of these inputs up to an AND gate, and then just add another AND gate right here, that means that the that means that these two would both have to be high in order for this uh, wire here to be high. And then this and this input would both need to be high in order for the final output to be high. Let's go ahead and connect these up here. And that should work. If any of our inputs are turned off, then our output is turned off. So let's run that to verify. And there we go. Bigger AND gate, three pin AND unlocked. All right, we, it looks like we have one more level in the basic logic section. X NOR gate, exclusive NOR. Create the inverse XOR gate known as X NOR. Okay, let's look at this logic. I, our background has changed, that's kind of interesting. So the exclusive NOR gate means that either both inputs are negative or both inputs are positive in order for the output to be positive. And I think this should be as simple as negating the output of an XOR gate. Normally, an XOR gate, if we were to run this, it would give us the inverse logic of what we want. So if we just throw a NOT gate in here, that should get us the results we need. We have unlocked the XNOR gate, exclusive NOR. All right, so we have now made it into the arithmetic and memory section. So. Let's take a look. I can. I want to start on the right here with circular dependency. Let's look at this. In our education system, we traditionally teach by tricking students into doing the wrong thing and then teasing them. That's pretty brutal. I'm not sure it benefits the students, but teachers love it. I bet you would love it, you weird SpongeBob looking. Anyways, I need to come up with a name for this guy at some point. Create a circular dependency. This is a circuit where the input of a component relies on its own output. In a, circular, in a circular dependency situation, it is not possible to determine the output of a component because you would first need to determine the input. This state is normally not allowed in other levels, but the level of this goal is to create it so you understand what it is before going forward. Okay, so create a circuit where the input of a component depends on its own output. Okay, what if we just do a... Actually, let's do an AND gate here. Let's zoom in. So if I was to put this here, I think there's a way to, okay, if I double click, then it'll 
keep the wires with it. If I was to loop this around to itself, that's a circular dependency. Let's check that. Okay, create a circular dependency involving at least two components. Okay, so let's do an, a let's do a three input AND gate here. Let's do an OR gate down here. Uh, and let's let's hook this up to there. Make that OR gate there. Right, and that has unlocked circular dependency entry. So they're just teaching this so we know what not to do, but we don't typically want a circular dependency like this. Okay, start on the left. Binary racer. This level is my favorite pastime, converting decimal into binary under time pressure. Toggle the bits in the panel so they add up to the decimal number in question. You must beat level three to pass. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is just doing binary math. Uh, I had to do a lot of this in college. <laughs> All right, it sounds like we're about to be timed, so let's go. What is one in binary? What is two in binary? What is three? One plus two is three. 13 is gonna be eight plus two plus, no, whoops, eight plus four plus one. 6 in binary is 4 plus 2, 11 and 8 plus 2 plus 1, 12 is 8 plus 4, 1 is 1, 14 is 8 plus 4 plus 2, 22, 16, 4, 2, 16, no, 16, 4, 1, 2, 4, 19, 31 is going to be these three, is these here, 2, 37, submit, 62 in binary is 62, 32 is just that, 7 is 41, 38 is going to be that guy, 42, 38, it's the same, 14, uh, this is hard to keep up with all this, 47, 71, 121, 11. The secret with this is really just uh, pick the closest, highest number, and then start kind of toggling until you get to it. All right, good job. You reached level five. Hopefully you noticed there's exactly one way to write each number in binary. The value of each digit is always double of the previous digit. All right, so this is trying to essentially teach us the concept of a base two math system. So in um, normal math, we use base 10, uh, which means that each place, you know, like the ones place, the tens place, represents 10 different digits. So there's 10 options for each place. You've got zero through nine. In binary, you have a base two system. So there are only two options, zero or one, which means that the math is a little different. So what it was trying to teach us there was that each next place is two times the value of the previous. Like normally in decimal system, you've got the ones place times 10 is 10. Then you have the tens place. And then 10 times 10 is 100, which is why the next place is the hundreds place. So binary is similar. You have one times two is two times two is four times two is eight, and so on. It takes a while to wrap your brain around binary at first, but once you work with it enough, uh, it starts to make sense. Double trouble. Because we are so technologically advanced, we have machines for our socks. Unfortunately, the circuit that detects sock pairs broke on the machine. This level has four inputs. Output high when two or more of them are high. Tip. Don't overthink this level. All right. These inputs look kind of complicated, but he said that the rule was that we output high if two or more are high. Uh, let's think about this. If two or more are high. So if we were to connect all of our inputs up to two OR gates here, what would this mean? This means that if, well, I don't know if that's gonna work actually. If two or more are high, I was I was thinking that 
we can just connect these up like this. But the problem is that if we had one here, if we had two, it would only output one, uh, one signal here to the AND gate. So that that's not going to work here. Uh, we could literally just kind of brute force this if we needed to. If you would connect like two up to here for this AND gate, for example, two down to here, you would say like if this and this, you would need every possible combination of these, right? So then I would need the two in the middle. I would need, you know, the bottom one and the third one all connected to AND gates. That's obviously kind of overkill here. So I don't think we need all that craziness. Let's just think, if we were to do this, back to that first idea, if either the top two or the bottom two were high, uh, we would trigger this AND gate. The problem here is that if the t only the top two are high, um, then that's not gonna work. So what if we were to say, if both of these are high, then that would be one condition, right? Um, that would cause us to set the output high. Uh, if both of the bottom ones were high, that would be another condition um, that would satisfy, right? That would satisfy the output. Um, now we wouldn't want this because we'd have two gates driving the output we would want to combine that if possible and then alternatively if either of these combined with either of those were high that would work right so if we do a triple or gate here i think this will do it so i think we cover all the cases let's just think about it once more if the top two are both high then that triggers this and gate which then well, let's actually do it. Triggers this AND gate, which is one of the conditions, so the output gets high. If the bottom two are high, that's one condition. And then if the middle two are high, that also triggers it. So I think that'll work. Let's run. All right, there it is. And the last one in this row, odd number of signals. Using a maximum of three components output high only when an odd number of inputs are high. One thing we could think about is an XOR gate, right? If we were to hook two of these up to an XOR, that means that this would only output high if one of these was enabled, but not both. We we're gonna do two XOR gates. This would work for the case where, if we were to do like three XOR gates like this, then that would handle the case where we have, actually this one, this might work. Okay, so let's look at what's happening here. If I toggle just one, then the output of this XOR is going to be high. If I toggle just the other one, it's high. But if I toggle both, that's an even amount, then the output is low. The same thing should happen on this bottom one here. If I toggle both, the output is low. So I think that does it. Three XOR gates chained. Let's try this. All right, there we go. What did we unlock? <laughs> Wire color. Keep your wires organized with colors. Nice and wire comments, add comments to your wires. I like that. Okay, let's keep going on delayed lines. That sounds interesting. This level introduces the delay line component. It takes its input and outputs it one tick later. Input, output. Construct a circuit that outputs the same as the input, just delayed by two ticks. Okay, so we are starting to get into timing now. So we're going to need to delay by two ticks. So if I do this, that should delay it, right? By two ticks. All right, that seems right. One thing about digital logic and, and just computers in general is that you can design all the, all the logic itself. But when you think about real world constraints, timing is super, super important. I'll be interested to see how complex these circuits are gonna start to get. Let's keep on going. Let's do one more up in this uh, memory chain here. Odd ticks. In a previous level, you learned how we don't allow circular dependencies. Now you must learn the one exception. The delay line is allowed to depend on its own input. 
This is because its input does not influence the rest of the circuit until the next tick. Square pins in the game never affect the output in the same tick. They therefore never cause circular dependencies. Output low on the even ticks and high on the odd ticks. So I could theoretically feed that back into itself like that. And it would allow that because it's a square input. Let's think about this. If we were to just connect this up by itself, right? This is just a delay. If the input is always going to be negative here, then that's never going to change, right? This is just going to be negative the whole time through. So that's not what we need. Let's try this. If we were to do a, a NOR gate, let's think about a NOR gate here. So if we were to take the output of this and feed it into a NOR gate, now remember what a NOR gate does. A NOR gate says that if none of the inputs are high, then the output will be high. So this input is low. And if we take the output of this delay, that will also be low. When both are low, the NOR gate will be high. So what if we were to take the input here and the output of the delay, feed it into a NOR gate, and then replace this here with an OR gate? Uh, let's back this up a little bit here. What I think this will do is this will start low. It'll go through the OR gate. Oh, this is going to be high to be to start. Hmm, I don't know if that's going to work then. Oh, wait, no, that is working. Okay. Good. All right, unlocked circular recipes. Odd ticks. And let's do one more while we're on it. Tick inverter. We are experimenting with how backgrounds influence cognitive functions in earthlings. So that's why the backgrounds have been changing every level. I've been wondering about that. When invert is high, output the opposite of value. Otherwise, just output value as is. All right, so we have a value toggle here and we have an invert toggle here. We also have this wire color and this wire comment. So let's play around with that too. So what we need to do is invert the value only if this invert line is set. So what we're gonna need to do is, first of all, let's figure out how to invert the value, right? So if we were to take this, uh, this top one is the value, and we were to pass it through a not gate, that would give us our output, the inverted output. Now let's, why don't we color this purple here? Purple is going to be our main value going through. The problem is we don't always want to invert. We only want to invert if the invert signal is toggled. So let's use cyan for the invert line. If we're to put these OR gates through and then put in a two pin and then we could say that at least one of the signals has to be high for the output to be high. What happens here? All right, and that matches our logic table. This level is exactly the same as the XOR one you solved before. Remember, no matter what we tell you the goal of the level is, the real truth is in the truth table. That's a pretty good lesson there. All right, let's do just a couple more counting signals. The output component of this level is a binary counter where the first three pins correspond to one, two, and four. Use the binary counter to display the number of signals. The solution for this level is not very neat and requires more components. Okay, so let's see exactly how this works. It says the binary counter counts signals. Let me just see what happens if I hook these up here. One, three, five. Okay, so the top is our, this is just binary. Okay, one's place, two place, four's place. And we need to count the number of signals. Let's start with the zero and the four case here. We wanted to output a four only if all four input signals are high. So that should be pretty straightforward. We could use a three pin and and a two pin and to do this. So if we were to take 
these signals here and route them like this and connect that to the four or to the four place of this binary counter then if all four signals are high then it's going to output a four okay that's pretty good that's what we want for that so that's the first sort of situation here let's also think about the zero situation if none of the inputs are high we don't want it to output anything well let's come back to that let's let's start to think about the three situation how do we account for three okay it seems like there are four situations in which we could have four different configurations where we could have three inputs right we'd have the top three could be on the bottom three could be on or uh, the one three and four or conversely the one two and four so we could just kind of brute force here and take the one two and four through here and then the one three and four here it did say that this was going to be messy so you know we'll start with the messy solution and then we might be able to clean it up but essentially if any of these sort of scenarios were to occur right if uh if any of these were to be high these are the four scenarios where we could have three on if any of these are high then this or gate should trigger the one and the two place in order to get three so let's see here if we have three on then we get a three output if we have ooh, oh that's a problem it adds here to seven so it doesn't work for the force case it should work for all the different cases of having three on let's back this up right now this should trigger the the one and the two place this triggers the four place but if essentially this should override like if there are four inputs toggled then that should take precedence over three inputs toggled so this output of this or gate should only output if the and is not on down here would this be an exclusive or gate only when the inputs are different i could do it simpler right so a two two input and and just take the output of this guy right out through here So now if I were to toggle all four, then it outputs a four. Because this is negated, it won't get through the AND gate, so it doesn't add up to seven now. Now if I have three. All right, so we got the fours case and the three case. Let's think about the two case. Hmm, actually I have an idea. I'm going to get rid of all this, believe it or not. Because um, I, I think I have an idea of, of a better way to do this. Let's start. Let's start with the the two case, right? Let's get some ands here, some two input ands. Just thinking about that three case a second ago. First of all, if if all four are on, this should be set to four. Okay. So now if If this, if one of these AND gates is high, right, then that means two are on. And then if either of, of the other two are on, then that would be three. So if we were to take the output of this AND, put it into an OR gate, let's actually make it a three input OR. Take the output of this AND. No, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a two, two input OR. I need to separate these out a little bit. We're gonna take these inputs here, put this into an OR, and put this into an OR. Right. Then we're gonna take an AND gate and combine it with this OR. Okay, so what am I doing here? 
what I'm doing is saying that if one of these AND gates for the top two or the bottom two, if one of these is is high and, oh, I, I connected to the wrong ones here. So these actually need to cross. Okay, I've cleaned this up a little bit. I need these to cross here. What's happening is that we're saying if if the top two are high right here and either of these inputs are high, then that's three, right? Alternatively, if either of these two are high and, or if, sorry, if both of these two are high and either one of these is high, then that's three and that gives us an AND gate here. So in order to trigger three, we'll take an OR gate of either of these, and this will output three. Now, we need to account for, if all four are on, we don't want it to add to seven. So we need to uh, check this here. We'll do an AND gate here, and we'll take the inverse of this signal. So now this should only output if all four are not on. So if we have three in any spot, that outputs three. If we have all four, it's all four. If we have, oh, I didn't need to click on that. If none of them are on, it's a zero. So now we need to account for two and one. So let's think about two. We already have these AND gates here that say are, are two of them on. Now we, we do also need to account for the two in the middle. If the two in the, well, hold on. We have OR gates here. If the two in the middle are on, then both of these OR gates would be high. They would each trigger one of the inputs for this OR gate. So if both of these are high, you know, I might need to do some color coding here. So now if two are on, triggers a two, if I do a third one, it's three. Ooh, but now we're getting six. This is pretty complicated. Um... Oh my goodness, we finally got it. That was very complicated. I'm sure that could have been simplified a lot, but, uh, that was quite complicated. That's a situation where something, there's a technique called K maps or Carnot maps, might be helpful for reducing the complexity of this and finding a more optimal solution. Okay, after a bit more thought and uh, actually some application of computer engineering techniques that I learned in digital logic design, I've actually created a more complex uh, solution for this counting signals problem and you'll notice that this solution uses only and and or gates so using just those two gates you see that the solution is, is a lot more complex but I derived this using truth tables and a technique called K maps which stands for Carnot maps which is essentially just a technique for solving and simplifying systems of Boolean algebra in order to generate a solution. So with simple Boolean algebra, I just was using AND and OR gates, and this is the circuit you get, and this works. Um, you'll see if I run this, it passes. Then I also, I wanted to refine it because you, this is a lot more gates and a lot more complexity than the first solution that was just off the cuff. So I decided to revisit my techniques and try to utilize some of the other gates. So I did some more work with K maps 
and I was able to come up with this uh, much more compact simplified solution here that also passes. So, uh, you know, truth tables and K maps are a really powerful tool for simplifying your logic, for kind of planning it out, and it takes away a lot of the guesswork. And I think I'm going to call it there. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. If you're more interested about how I actually use the truth tables and K maps, how to actually use those techniques to solve uh, a digital logic problem, let me know and maybe I'll make a video breaking that down in more detail. Thanks.